Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you to uh, Mr. Goffman for coming in. A um, couple quick questions. One is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm ranking member of this new committee in Congress dedicated to kind of winning the competition against the Chinese Communist Party. Um, and this select committee is looking at the EV industry, in particular as an area where the Chinese dominate the global electric vehicle industry. Um, how, if at all, would your rules uh, help us in competing against the Chinese with regard to this crucial EV industry of the future? Thank you for that question, because um, the competition you describe is a tremendous opportunity for America um, to uh, expand its leadership in clean technologies. It's an opportunity that I think we as a country have already seized. It's reflected in the Inflation Reduction Act and the bipartisan infrastructure law. And these rules are part of the greater, if I can put it this way, the greater fabric of the strategy um, to uh, build out investment here in the United States in every part of what it takes um, to create uh, a zero emitting fleet on American roads. And I, I, I sense that there's broad concern about the cost of electric vehicles being so high. That has to come down for average, ordinary people to be able to access them. But would you agree that the only way that the cost per car can actually go down is through economies of scale. That means making a lot of these um, with uh, over a certain period of time so that on a per unit basis, they go down in price. That sounds to me, uh, from what you just said, Congressman, exactly what the strategy of the major auto manufacturers is. Two and a half years ago, or two years ago, uh, the Detroit 3 announced a commitment to selling 50% EVs by 2030. And at least one of those companies uh, followed up that announcement last fall by saying that its commitment was to make 100% new car EVs by 2035. Was that Ge General Motors? General Motors, yeah. And that seems to be perfectly aligned with what you described. So what you're saying is you're describing what the private sector is already doing. Correct. I met with GM CEO Mary Barra yesterday in Detroit, along with Mike Gallagher, my chairman, and several bipartisan members of this committee. Detroit is already ahead of the game. They are already doing what you are prescribing within these rules. So the question to me is this, how else do these rules help us? It appears that it helps to reduce carbon dioxide, and greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and why is that important? Why is it so important to reduce those emissions in the time frame that you have indicated? Um, well, it, it's important for several reasons. First of all, these rules um, are, again, work in partnership with the investments that Congress has already made. So that what we're creating is not only we, by we I mean the administration and Congress, is a very powerful incentives to support the, what the private sector is planning to do. But these rules actually provide the American public with assurance um, that, they will, that they will see the emissions reductions that we will get as we put more and more cleaner and cleaner cars on the road. I would just in, a time, in a time frame when uh, every people today are suffering significant air quality related health problems. And the buildup of greenhouse gases like CO2 in the atmosphere um, is programming in uh, increased weather disruption and climate disruption. Now, you have proposed a uh, rule, uh, you've proposed a rule, uh, just as anybody, any administration does with regard to rulemaking, and you invite comments. Correct. Uh, as part of this process. Are you willing to potentially adjust any part of this rule based on the comments that you receive either from individuals, entities, anyone affected in this process? We, we've designed the proposal to capitalize on the opportunity that commenters will provide us. We, what we laid out is not just one approach. We laid out four different approaches. And our, we're counting on using that as a framework to engage with stakeholders, the public, states, and the industry 
so that when we finalize these rules, the approach we do adopt will achieve all of the objectives that everybody this morning um, spoke to. Thank you. I appreciate your testimony.